Pope Francis routinely specifies the fallen angel in broad daylight talks and on Twitter, with standard references to, the villain, Satan, the accuser, the evil one, the father of lies, the ancient serpent, the tempter, the seducer, the great dragon, the enemy, devil, and army. Note the phrasing serpent and mythical beast, names some trust insinuate reptilians, or Rainanaki, who are frequently connected with the black market. CNN.com reports. For Francis, the fiend is not a myth, but rather a genuine individual. Numerous present-day individuals may welcome the Pope's emphasis on the demon with a contemptuous, social artificiality, apathy, or and no more liberal interest. However Francis alludes to the fallen angel constantly. He doesn't trust him to be a myth, yet a genuine individual, the most deceptive adversary of the congregation. A few of my scholar partners have said that he has run a bit over the edge with the villain and hellfire. We might be enticed to ask, why in the fallen angel is Pope Francis so required with the sovereign of evil presences? This astute Jesuit pope is plunging into profound religious waters, places where not very many current Catholic pastors wish to tread. Francis appearing distraction with the fiend is not a philosophical or eschatological inquiry as much as an invitation to battle, a solicitation to prompt activity, offering exceptionally solid strides to do battle with the villain and the reign of malevolence on the planet today. In his instructions, Francis cautions individuals emphatically to stay away from debilitation, to seize trust, to proceed onward with strength and not to fall prey to antagonism or pessimism. He is drawing on the major understanding of St. Ignatius of Loyola, originator of the Society of Jesus, the Pope's own religious family. With his non-stop references to the fiend, Pope Francis goes separate ways with the present lecturing in the congregation, which is dreadfully quiet about the demon and his guileful ways or decreases him to a negligible representation. Amid the primary periods of Francis' pontificate in 2013, the evil one showed up often in his messages. In his initially real deliver to the cardinals who chose him, the Argentine pontiff reminded them, let us never respect negativity, to that severity that the demon offers us consistently. In a few day-by-day -day instructions in the sanctuary of the Vatican Visitor House, the Pope imparted malevolent stories to the little assemblies riveted in consideration as he homilized on forbidden subjects. He has offered rules on the best way to defeat the evil spirit's methodology, first, it is Jesus who fights the fallen angel. The second is that we can't acquire the triumph of Jesus over underhandedness and the fallen angel by equal parts, for as Christ said in the Gospel of Matthew, who is not with me is against me, and he who does not assemble with me disperses. The Pope has focused on that we should not be credulous, the evil spirit is adroit. He is never thrown out everlastingly, this will just occur on the most recent day. Francis has additionally issued invitations to battle in his lessons, the villain likewise exists in the 21st century, and we have to gain from the gospel how to fight against him, the Pope cautioned, including that Christians ought not be credulous about the shrewd one's ways. The demon is definitely not a relic of the past, the pontiff said. Recognizing the demon's intelligence, Francis once lectured, the fiend is canny, he knows more religious philosophy than every one of the scholars together. Prior to a horde of individuals on Palm Sunday in 2013, the recently chose Pope even set out to state that when Christians confront trials, Jesus is close, however so is the foe, the fiend, who comes, frequently camouflaged as a blessed messenger and cleverly talks his oath to us. Most as of late, on July 12th, in the readied content he was to convey, in commonplace mold he rather gave an amazing, unscripted deliver to 600,000 youngsters at a rally in Paraguay, the Pope exhibited the set of working responsibilities of the villain. Companions, the fallen angel is a cheat. He makes guarantees after guarantee, yet he never conveys. He'll never truly do anything he says. He doesn't follow through on his guarantees. He influences you to need things which he can't give, regardless of whether you get them or not. He influences you to put your expectations in things which will never make you glad, he is a swindler since he discloses to us that we need to forsake our companions, and never to remain by anybody. Everything depends on appearances. 
the influences you to surmise that your value relies upon the amount you have. Since the start of his papacy, Francis has been cautioning that whoever needs to take after Jesus must know about the truth of the fallen angel. The life of each Christian is a steady fight against insidious, similarly as Jesus amid his life needed to battle against the fallen angel and his numerous enticements. For Francis, the soul of malice at last does not need our blessedness, he doesn't need our Christian witness, he doesn't need us to be followers of Christ. In these references to the demon and his many camouflages, Pope Francis wishes to get back to everybody to reality. The fallen angel is so every now and again dynamic in our lives and in the congregation, drawing us into antagonism, skepticism, give up, ugliness of soul, bitterness and wistfulness. We should respond to the fallen angel, Francis says, as did Jesus, who answered with the word of God. With the sovereign of this world one can't exchange. Exchange is essential among us, it is fundamental for peace, it is a mentality that we should have among ourselves keeping in mind the end goal to hear each other, to see each other. Discourse is conceived from philanthropy, from affection. In any case, with the dark prince one can't exchange, one can just react with the word of God that shields us. The demon has made a rebound in this pontificate and is assuming a critical part in France's service. Francis is dead genuine about the villain. Also, he accepts each open door he can to advise the demon to get the hellfire out of our lives and our reality. It isn't so much that Francis has been concentrating on the abhorrent one's energy, nor has he been entranced by the Harry Potter films or by a want to do spin offs of the Exorcist motion picture. This Pope doesn't sit in front of the TV. The greater part of the enticements Francis talks about so frequently are the sensible flip side to the core of the Argentine Jesuit Pope's message about the world that is accused of the loftiness, leniency, nearness and constancy of God. Those forces are far more noteworthy than the fallen angel's shenanigans.